Good morning everybody, good morning it's JPR and welcome back to another video. We all know what legendary Pokemon are, I hope. They're exceedingly rare species, some with godlike powers that shapes the Pokemon world, but what if I told you that a lot of them aren't as rare as you think they are? In this video I'll be going through all the available data on every legendary Pokemon to rank them from most common to least common. Now to set some ground rules I will mostly be pulling from lore established by the mainline games with some occasional support from the anime and other media so long as it doesn't break any pre-established lore set by said games. The only evidence from the core games that we will not be considering are the legendary Pokemon found within Hoopa's rings in the post-game of Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, as well as the ones found in various Ultra Space dimensions in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Because with both of these cases, the Pokemon could be taken from across time and space or alternate dimensions, so we will only be considering how many there are in one universe with no shenanigans. Also, I know someone is going to ask, so I'll go ahead and say it, mythical Pokemon will not be counted. I may do another video about them some other time. So Mew, Cell Celebi, Arceus, Zerud, all of those dudes won't be considered and neither will Calyrex since our information on it is quite limited at the moment. With that being said, let's get started. The Most Common Starting things off with the most common category is Entei. According to Entei's Pokedex entry from Pokemon's Silver version, an Entei is born every time a new volcano appears. Now, this does contradict with the lore about Entei, Raikou, and Suicune being reincarnations of Pokemon that died at the Burned Tower, but perhaps that legend only pertains to the originals. If we are to believe the Pokedex, then there should be at least four Entei roaming around the Pokemon world given that Mount Chimney, Stark Mountain, Reversal Mountain, and Wella Volcano all exist. The main problem with this approach is that if we assume that the first Entei was born 150 years ago during the events of the Burn Tower, then we could only count volcanoes that formed in the last 150 years. Which would still only be a few, but more than most legendary Pokemon. As for Raikou and Suicune, while there isn't any Pokedex data to support them being fairly common, we can assume they still are based on the number of NPCs who use them as part of their teams. As multiple frontier brains use legendary beasts, and shiny versions of all three beasts canonically exist in both the games and anime known as the Guardian Protectors of Crown City. In the games, we know there are at least two distinct trios roaming both Kanto and Johto. The legendary birds are sadly even more common. In Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, multiple legendary birds can be found throughout the Kanto region after becoming champion. Although there is a question to the validity of Let's Go as it certainly isn't on the same timeline as most other Pokemon games. But even without those games, the legendary birds appear in both the Kanto and Kalos regions, and even if the player captures the legendary birds in Kalos, Dana from the Battle Maison will still have a complete trio of legendary birds. Multiple legendary birds have also appeared throughout the Pokemon anime in several different regions. Oh, and they all have regional forms now, so that alone suggests that their original species had to be somewhat populous. It would also be safe to assume that Lugia is fairly common as well, but just stays better hidden. Lugia is the trio master of the birds, so it could be assumed that there is one Lugia for every trio. In the anime, different Lugia have also appeared in multiple locations, and it is one of the only legendary Pokemon in the anime that can canonically reproduce, as evidenced by Silver and the baby Lugia. Now I know some of you may be thinking this is stretching it a bit since Lugia is in the undiscovered egg group in the games and therefore cannot breed, but that's something we'll come back to a little later when it's easier to explain. Hold your horses. The final group of legendary Pokemon in the most common category is the Reggie Trio. Now we're not entirely sure about Regieleki and Regidrago yet as info implies that Regigigas crafted them from far more scarce materials. But we do know that Regigigas created plenty of the original three. There's a trio in Hoenn, Sinnoh, and Unova, and like the birds and beasts before them, multiple trainers throughout the series use Regis as part of their team. Fairly common. Next up is the Fairly Common tier. These are all legendary Pokemon that are proven to exist in multiple places at once, but not to the same degree as the ones before them. Starting us off with this category is the Eon duo, Latias and Latios. The Emerald Pokedex explicitly states that Latias live in small herds away from people and other Pokemon. Both of these Pokemon also appear in the Kanto, Hoenn, and Unova regions. In the Pokemon Heroes movie, it is also stated that Latias and Latios had another Latios as a father. And who could forget Tobias in the anime also had a Latios of his own, though that may have been due to his usage of an action replay. Next is another family of legendary Pokemon, in fact the first ones confirmed to be capable of evolution, the Cosmog family. This one doesn't need much explaining, as you can literally see the process of new Cosmog being born in the Sun and Moon games. It's not as bad as it sounds, don't worry. And furthermore, Alola's legends also mention the existence of multiple Solgaleo and Lunala throughout time. Next up are three of the Sinnoh legendaries, Cresselia, Regigigas, and Heatran. 
In the Sinnoh region, there are at least two of each, one caught by the protagonist, and the others reside on the team of Frontier Brain Palmer. An extra of each of these Pokemon lives in the Unova region in Black 2 and White 2, where apparently everyone from Sinnoh flocks for the summer. So in total, there are at least three of each of these Pokemon, possibly more. Heatran in particular has a knack for showing up at multiple different points in history in the anime. Up next are the two Unova trios, the Swords of Justice and the Forces of Nature. In Black 2 and White 2, both trios still reside in the Unova region, and while at the same time in the Kalos regions, they are used by the heads of the Battle Maison. Again, they appear in the Hoenn remakes and the Ultra games, but they're both wormhole related, so it doesn't count. Now, we don't have to do a lot digging to find out about Cubfu and Urshifu. First of all, we can quite clearly see that Mustard himself is in possession of a Cubfu that later evolves into an Urshifu, so it certainly isn't one of a kind. Furthermore, one of Urshifu's Pokedex entries mentions that this Pokemon originally lived in the mountains of another far-off region, implying that there is at least one other Urshifu out there that does not belong to the player or Mustard. The hard evidence ends there, but given the whole culture of the Isle of Armor and the training ritual that revolves around Kubfu, I'd say it's safe to assume that multiple generations of this Pokemon have been raised and given away to different trainers. Here's where we'll discuss the whole egg group thing again, too. While we can logically assume that Urshifu reproduced Kubfu, these Pokemon still remain in the undiscovered egg group. This means that, like Lugia, Urshifu and some other legendary Pokemon likely still have a way of reproducing, just not one that is known to humans, or the daycare workers for that matter. Not that they knew how that egg got there anyway. So that's my spiel on eggs and legendary Pokemon reproduction, and with that, we have concluded the fairly common tier. Few of a kind. Just like it sounds, this tier encompasses legendary Pokemon that are extremely rare, but we know more than one of them exists. The first one may be a bit of a shocker, Mewtwo. For a long time, it was assumed that Mewtwo was a one-of-a-kind Pokemon, but that all got turned on its head in late Gen 5 when the 16th Pokemon movie introduced a new Mewtwo, showing that anyone can clone one so long as they have the DNA of Mew. Yes, that movie is unfortunately canon and also does not break with the games where a clearly different Mewtwo is found in Pokemon X and Y's unknown dungeon. There is also a possible third Mewtwo residing in Cerulean Cave in Heart Gold and Soul Silver, but not in the original, so this one is questionable. It could very well be the same Mewtwo from the Gen 1 games, but Red just decided to skip the post game and let it roam free. Regardless, that Mewtwo does not influence his placement on this list. The fact of the matter is, there are at least two Mewtwo's that exist within the Pokemon world in both Kanto and Kalos. Another possible shocker is Dialga, Palkia, and Giratina. While the Sinnoh legends only describe there being one of each, we can see firsthand in Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver that Arceus can create eggs of all three of these Pokemon. Now, I've been pretty hesitant to include events as part of the main canon, but the Sinjo ruins as well as the creation of new eggs is seen in the Pokemon Adventures manga as well, which is more than most other Pokemon events I'm going for them, which leads me to believe that this is fair game. There have likely been multiple creation trios throughout history, but like the legendary beast, the legends about Dialga Palkia and the banishment of Giratina to the Distortion World likely only refer to the originals. Zygarde is an easy one. He has five cores, he appears in both Kalos and Alola, and you can quite literally create new ones by using Zygarde cells. There are two distinctly different Zygarde in the anime as well. Sure, you could argue that Zygarde's complete form is the only one that counts, but I would argue otherwise. A Zygarde is a Zygarde regardless of the form it takes, as long as it's alive. Now, I'm aware that you can realistically assemble up to 99 10% Zygarde's in Pokemon Sun and Moon if you get enough from trading, but I'm sticking to the in-game lore that states that only one of its cores can assemble cells. Because cells on their own are not sentient Pokemon. He's complicated, but I'm sticking with the number 5. And rounding this tier out is none other than Type Null. I know, I know, a lot of people still don't know that Type Null is considered a legendary. I promise I'm not making this up. Don't ask me why some man-made Pokemon are legendary while Porygon isn't. I don't make the rules. Like Zygarde, though, he's pretty easy. Official Aether Foundation records indicate that there's three different Type Nulls that were created at one point before they were cryogenically frozen. And Type Null's Pokedex entry in Pokemon Sword states that an expert thief stole the plans and created a fourth one in the Gala region, with the possibility being open that even more are being made in the current day, meaning that there's a good chance that Type Null could drop a tier in the near future. Possibly one of a kind. These are Pokemon with some conflicting evidence about their rarity or are related to some event that may or may not be considered canon. There's quite a few gray areas in this one, so get ready. 
Starting us off are the Sinnoh Lake Trio, Yuxi, Mesprit, and Azelf. Although the Pokedex and most other sources seem to suggest that the members of the Lake Trio are one of a kind, there is one piece of crucial evidence against them, being the Lake Trio that appears in the Unova region in Pokemon Black 2 and White 2. There's very little explanation as to why they're in Unova, and normally I would just assume that this is a different trio from the original one found in Sinnoh. But if that were the case, why would there be an inscription of the Sinnoh region found on the floor inside the Cave of B? That just makes no sense. Furthermore, Yuxi, Mesprit, and Azelf are optional catches in both Sinnoh and Unova, being post-game material in both games, so it really is hard to say. But at the very least, we can confidently say that there are only one or two Lake Trios, which gets it pretty high up on this list. In a very similar position are Groudon, Kyogre, and Rayquaza, and this is mostly due to the embedded tower in Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver. So, like the Mewtwo we mentioned earlier, this of course wasn't in the original Gold and Silver games because Groudon and Kyogre weren't invented yet. So, if we're using the original games as canon, then it's case closed, they're one of a kind. But Oras did establish that there is a Pokemon. On multiverse, so maybe all remakes happen on a different timeline and they aren't actually retconning anything from the original games. But there is no 100% surefire way of knowing, sadly. Though if we look further, Groudon Kyogre are version exclusives in Hard Gold and Soul Silver, which just throws another wrench into this whole thing. And also, the Jade Orb, which summons Rayquaza at the tower, is never mentioned ever again. Even in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, where they had the chance to use it over the meteorite, but chose not to. So in my mind, this is all just non-canon extra material because nothing from the Embedded Tower matches up with the lore both before and after Heart Gold and Soul Silver. It's just weird. I'm leaning towards one of a kind, but we can't rule any evidence out. Make of that what you will. So another legendary mascot that we haven't discussed yet is Ho-Oh, kind of a surprise seeing as how he got his counterpart Lugia out of the way a long time ago. And this isn't biased, I swear. But there really isn't any definite evidence in the games, anime, or manga that suggests that there is more than one Ho-Oh. Now, he is in this tier for a reason, though, because there is some more questionable evidence against him. There is a Ho-Oh that appears in Pokemon Coliseum's main story, and it can even be transferred back to the mainline games. But I'm very hesitant to count that because at the end of the day, it is a spin-off game that just so happens to have connectivity with the main series. So they can realistically do whatever they want. Secondly, even if those games are canon, we don't know where Coliseum fits in the Pokemon timeline. So it could be the same Ho-Oh from the Joe region just seen at a much earlier point in time. The only real strike against Ho-Oh is in the form of an naval rock event to Pokemon Fire Red, Leaf Green, and Emerald, where both Ho-Oh and Lugia can be encountered. But the issue with that is, it's an event, and not even one that fits cleanly like Darkrai or Shaman in Pokemon Platinum. It's basically just extra content with no attachment to the original games whatsoever. So, like the Weather Trio, I'm also leaning towards classifying Ho-Oh as one of a kind, but it is up for debate. These next two are weird to lump together since they come from different generations and have no direct relation to each other, but it's Necrozma and Eternatus. Both of these Pokemon are relatively new, so there really hasn't been a chance for any evidence to come out against them yet, but the main problem was they are both Aliens. Eternatus came from a meteor in outer space, and Necrozma is an Ultra Beast that came to Alola through a wormhole. So it's quite possible that there are more Necrozma and more Eternatus out there, we just don't know about them yet. And lastly, we have Silvalli. Silvalli is weird because he's basically Type Null without his helmet on. So you could argue that he should be moved down a tier. But at the same time, if you say, no, Silvalli is an entirely different Pokemon from Type Null, the others don't count, then he could be one of a kind, and that would be the one owned by Gladion, seeing as how he is the one that named it and uses it in-game. Although Gladion does give a Type Null to the player in the post-game, it's entirely optional as to whether the player evolves that Type Null or not. He could honestly go in any of the top three tiers, it's just how you interpret it. One of a kind. And finally, we move into our last category, which are the Pokemon that we know are one of a kind, and at least so far, there isn't any valid evidence against them. Let's start with the easy ones, being the Tapus. There is one per island, and it's never implied that more than one of them has existed throughout history. Yes, there is a distribution for a second set of shiny Tapus in-game. Now, I said events are questionable, but distributions are certainly not up for debate. There is nothing canon about the delivery man in the Pokemon Center handing you shiny 
shiny versions of these ancient deities. Sorry. Shiny Tapakuko also appears in the anime, but again, it's an alternate universe. It's not the same Alola that we know from all of their forms of media. It doesn't count. I'm pretty confident on this one. They're one of a kind. Up next are Zekrom, Reshiram, and Kyurem. We'll start with Zekrom and Reshiram. All legends point to there being two heroes, one Lightstone, one Darkstone, and they only appear in Unova discounting the wormholes. The only thing that could possibly go against this is the anime, where Ash sees Zekrom and Reshiram at different points, but in the 14th movie, one of them had not been awakened yet. But given the nature of that movie and the fact that there's two different versions of it, it is certainly not canon. As for Kyurem, there were originally questions as to whether or not he was the husk of the original dragon that Zekrom and Reshiram once were, or if he were simply an alien who crash landed on Earth a long time ago, which would put him in the same category as Necrozma and Eternatus. But as time has gone on, it seems far more likely that Kyurem appearing at the same time the meteor crashed near Lakanosa Town was nothing more than a coincidence. And just recently, I found some more evidence against this theory, as the Isle of Armor added a new attack, Meteor Beat which is a move that is primarily learned by rock-type Pokemon and extraterrestrials, such as Eternatus, Starmie, Clefairy, LGM, etc. Well, despite not being in the decks, Kyurem is in Pokemon Sword and Shield. He was not cut. Yet, he does not learn Meteor Beam, which seemingly deconfirms the theory that he is an alien, meaning that he must be the remains of the original dragon after all. Let me know if you found that interesting. And the last four Pokemon are all kinda in the same category. They are Xerneas, Eveltal, Zacian, and Zamazenta. There is surprisingly very little lore surrounding these Pokemon, and they are all relatively new, therefore, as of me making this video, there is no evidence suggesting that these Pokemon are anything but one of a kind. Wait a minute. Xerneas was a Pokeball Pokemon in Smash Bros. I have to remake this entire video now. Wow. That's it, I'm finally done. Here is the official tier list, or at least official by me. As I mentioned numerous times, there's quite a few gray areas. A lot of these are up to your own interpretation. I just wanted to set the record straight with as many as I possibly could. Now, let's just hope that nothing happens in the immediate future that would change the statuses of several of these legendary Pokemon. Oh dear God. But hey, that's it for me. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to like and subscribe. Apparently, according to YouTube, 90% of people who watch these videos aren't subscribed, so uh, if you're new, then anything helps, and yeah, I'll see you guys next time.